Also exciting, may not seem like a seasonable destination, but I'm telling you the wilds in the winter and the early spring can be pretty amazing, especially if you love rhinos. And there are currently six adorable reasons to book your next adventure. For our rhino program, the way we breed, most of our calves are born during the winter. So if you want to see the magic of our rhino program, coming during the winter is definitely a highlight. So coming out here during the winter, having this unique experience is something as a rhino fan, I highly recommend. And it's a record year for the wilds. So we've had six calves born at the wilds this year. Um, we've had four uh, white rhinos and two gray or one horn rhinos, all between the months of September and or early February. So we've all had them within a real short time period too. So they're all around the same age. They're all kind of growing up with their parents and herd mates, and they're all kind of learning how to be little rhino. So it's real cool to be able to see that happen right now. For the most part, the staff here is hands off, aside from preparing a space for the births. After that, they're really just watching to make sure that the little ones hit their benchmarks. We want to make sure calf stands on stands within an hour or two after being born. We all want to make sure the calf nurses within an hour or two after that. Um, and then we just want to make sure uh, calf is nursing routinely and um, uh, processing that nutrients as it should and growing and developing properly. And during these colder months, having the proper facilities to house them only helps that progress. Being able to have the space and the facilities to keep them in socially appropriate environments, to keep the white rhinos as a herd year round and let the calves grow up with the rest of the herd from the time they're a month old, which is what they're doing in the wild. They get to interact with all their other herd mates at around a month old and we're able to emulate that here. And that's pretty unique for our situation being able to keep the one horn rhinos um, more individually, but then incorporate them at a later age. Um, being able to have the space and facilities to do that, it's, it's very unique in this world, and I'm very, I feel very fortunate to be able to be a part of that and be able to, uh, be able to witness it each day. That's pretty incredible when you go out there, you see all the little yeah. babies running around, they're with their moms or, you know, the, yeah. the whole little crew. And then the other rhinos that they have, they like to be a little more sectioned mm -hmm. off. Um, so they've got the facilities to do both and for them to thrive. And it wasn't just me. It's not like yeah. I, I got some special behind the scenes thing. Mm -hmm. Anybody can go out this time That's of year, great. take that rhino barn tour, um, and I highly recommend it. It's very cool. It's just a great way to get close to an animal. You don't think you're going to be able to get close to right. ever. Right, exactly. Ever. And, you know, to see the size difference, too, to the babies and the grown yes. ones, that's fantastic. You can yeah. feed some of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them are very food made, motivated. You saw me petting the baby. The <laughs> yeah. others really like to be pet. They're almost mm -hmm. like giant dogs I love that. in that yeah. sense. I mean, it's incredible. And coming up next week, we have one more rhino story mm -hmm. for you, because what's better than one? Two. Two.